Hi, my name is Eric Dahl from OmniFit, and today, seniors, today I'm giving you no excuses. I'm giving you no excuses because a lot of people tell me that it's hard to do workouts because they don't have equipment and they don't have time. Where I'm gonna actually solve your problems two in one. It's the no excuses one weight workout. So to do this workout, you're gonna need a weight, preferably if you have multiple weights depending on the exercise, but if you only have one, we're gonna use one weight and do a full body workout that's gonna give you no excuses. So folks, for this one weight workout, you're gonna need a timer, whether it be a 30 second timer or one minute timer. You're gonna need a timer because we're gonna move from one exercise to the next taking very little break, but we're gonna work our entire body. So are you folks ready to begin? So exercise number one is a one arm row, making sure we're in a leaning sideways and we're gonna roll for 30 seconds, just like this. And we're gonna make sure we're pulling our elbow back and we're gonna make sure that we're in our at about 45 degree angle as we're pulling our elbow back. And once we get to about 30 seconds on one side, I'm gonna have you switch to the other hand, other leg, leaning and pulling the other arm. So it's the same thing. We're pulling that elbow back, 30 seconds, leaning forward, making sure we're in great form. And then once we get to 30 seconds on this side, we move on to the next exercise. So exercise number two is a goblet squat, folks. So to do a goblet squat, I want you to take your weight and put it about chest height, hold it with both hands. If you notice my feet, they're towed out about 30 degrees. And I'm gonna do this with you folks. I'm gonna have you take your timer and once you set it, I want you to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. The main benefits of doing this goblet squat as a senior or anybody else is keeping the weight in front actually keeps your upright body much more upright and actually has a lot more core benefits than doing a back squat. So if you keep your upper body nice and tall as you're doing the goblet squat, and if you see the pace I'm going at right here is the pace you need to go at to do a goblet squat well. Exercise number two. So exercise number three, folks, we're going back to back with the leg work. And what I'm gonna have you do is again, grab your weight and we're now doing a kettle swing. But different than a kettle bell swing, we're gonna use our weight. So to do this exercise, we're gonna hold it between our legs with both hands and swing it with our hips coming forward and, and really pushing the hips forward as we're doing our swing. And we wanna make sure we're doing this and pushing our hips forward. The main difference with this as opposed to the goblet squat is this exercise is working the back of your legs, basically your glutes and hamstrings, which is why we want to do this as opposed to not just doing one, you want to do both. So the next one is the kettlebell or one way dumbbell swing. So the next exercise focus, now we're going to work the upper body again. And for this one, we're again going to use our one dumbbell and we're gonna do an alternating push-up, rolling from one arm to the next. And we can either do it from our knees or our toes. So as I set my timer, what I'm gonna have you folks do is get in the position that works for you, whether your knees or your toes, and we're gonna start in doing push-ups from one arm, switching sides, to the other arm. And we can either do it from our knees or our toes, as I mentioned before. So some people might say, it's hard on my hands. This is where I tell you to make the adjustment, put a fist down as you're alternating. Put our fist down and doing our push-up as we're alternating to make it easier on your wrist. But again, making sure we're going low enough to challenge our arms and our upper body. Exercise number four. Exercise number five, folks, we're gonna stay close to the ground. As you see me in a kneeling position, this position is really important because again, being in this position and being nice and upright really works your core already. This one is a kneeling shoulder press. Take your weight, whether you put it in the 
same side knee that's down or the other one, whatever you'd like. I know some seniors have problems kneeling down on one knee. This is where take a towel, take a pillow, take something, stick it under your knee. The key is being nice, tall and upright. We want to really engage those core muscles. So again, I'm going to set my timer, 30 seconds. I want you folks to push right over our head, breathing out, right over our head. Being in this position really engages these core muscles as we go up and down. A good tip to do, if you folks want to, is put your hand here. You should feel that your core muscles have to engage to maintain this position. You're also working your glute muscles actually to maintain this position also. And once we get our 30 seconds, folks, we're gonna, I'm gonna have you go ahead, switch sides. Same thing, switching our legs, switching our arms, setting our timer again, and we wanna make sure we're pressing, again, right over our head, maintaining good upright position. The more you can keep this knee from moving, the better. What you'll see with some people, if they're not stable, their knee will be doing this. But we don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure we're nice and tall, upright, and breathing out each time we press right over our head. Once you finish both arms, we can put our weight down and move on to exercise number six. So exercise number six, folks, the final exercise is a walking lunge. As I've mentioned in previous videos, some people have asked me in comments, how do I increase my grip strength? How do I increase my core strength? How do I increase my leg strength? This exercise actually has three in one. Great for your core, great for your grip, and great for your lower body. So what I'm gonna have you folks do is holding our weight in one hand, as I set my timer, I want you to lunge only as low as you can, keeping the weight in the one hand for 30 seconds. But if you notice, I'm keeping my upper body as tall as I can, regardless of how low I get, I'm keeping my upper body tall and lunging for 30 seconds. And you can go anywhere in your place, whether it be in a straight line, whether it be diagonally, whether it be in a circle. You folks pick your direction as long as you keep the weight in one hand. And then once we get to our 30 seconds, we're gonna switch hands, same thing and continue. The, keeping the weight in an unbalanced position actually works your core more because the weight is pulling you down more to that one side of the hand that's in. So again, like we did previously, we want to walk either straight line, diagonal, circle, whatever works, but we want to make sure our upper body is as tall as we can make it as we're lunging. So folks, once we finish our 30 seconds, we're almost home. So folks, what do you think? That's my no excuses one way workout. If that workout and the exercise in it were too easy, this is where I encourage you folks, get a heavier weight. Get something that's gonna actually make you work harder. The whole purpose of that, this exercise is to work your entire body as you see that we just did. Work on as many muscles as we can, but also get your heart rate up. You have to keep moving from one exercise to the next exercise to the next exercise. If you do it right, your heart rate should be up. And you may be wondering, after those six exercises, what next? Again, there's no reason why you can't do those same six exercises twice or maybe three times if you want more of a workout. So that's it for today, folks. This is Eric Daw from Omnifit. Take care.